Hello everyone. Myself Hasina Bivi, Assistant Professor of CSE Department, Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. This is the video lecture to see the topic Servlets and Java Servlet Architecture from the third unit of Web Technologies. Actually, the third unit is about server side programming. Servlets. Servlets are the Java programs that run on the Java enabled web server or application server. They are used to handle the request obtained from the web server, process the request and produces the response and then send a response back to the web server. The properties of web servlets are servlets works on the server side. It is capable of handling complex requests obtained from the web server. Servlets are grouped un under the advanced Java tree that is used to create the dynamic web applications. It is robust, well scalable and are primarily used in developing server side applications. Before the period of servlets, CGI common gateway interface was used in the used to develop the server side applications. The servlets can easily manage or control the application flow. They are suitable to implement business logic. They can effectively balance the load on the server side. They can easily generate dynamic web content, handle HTTP request and response. Servlets also act as an interceptor or filter for a specific group of requests. We can see the types of servlets. Servlets can be classified into two types, generic servlets and HTTP servlets. Generic servlets are servlets that provide functionality for implementing a servlet. It is a generic class from which all the customizable servlets are derived. It is protocol independent and it provides the support for the protocols like HTTP, FTP and SMTP. The class used in this servlet is java x dot servlet dot servlet and it has only two methods first one is init second one is destroy init method is used to initialize and allocate memory to the servlet and destroy method is used to deallocate the memory second category is http servlet this protocol dependent servlets that provide support for http request and response it is um, used to create web applications and as two methods are used in HTTP servlets they are do get and do post. There are three potential ways in which we can employ to create a servlet. First one is implementing servlet interface, extending generic servlet, extending HTTP servlet. Let us see the components of servlet architecture. Servlet architecture contains the business logic to process all the requests made by the client. Let us see the architecture diagram showing the servlet. So the servlet is working in the server side. In the diagram we are seeing the request will be uh, produced by the web browser and the request will be passed to the web server. In the web server side there is a servlets. Each servlet corresponds to the request came from the web server and it will be processed. So the servlets will take the necessary information or uh, take the requested file from the database and it will do the necessary processing on it to make it as a response that will be passed to the web browser. So the necessary responses will be packed up or created by the servlets and it will be passed to the web server again it will be uh, sent back to the web browser so the servlet container is the um, collection of servlets so already we uh, know the client the client is the agent who sends the HTTP request and it will be sent to the web server Web server generates a response based on some processing in the servlet. Then the client will process the response. Then web server, it will process the request and response to the user query or user request. Actually the server is server side there will be the software which manages the access to a centralized resource or service in the network. 
there are two types of web servers static web server and the dynamic web server then we <coughs> we seen the web container it is a typical component in the servlet architecture which is responsible for communicating with three servlets two primary task of the web container are managing the servlet life cycle url mapping the servlet request flow every servlet should override uh, these three methods first one is init method service method and destroy method init method is to initialize or instantiate the serv servlet container service method act as the intermediate intermediary between the http request and the business logic to serve that particular request then destroy method is used to deallocate the memory allocated to the servlet these three methods are used to process the request from the user so the, we are seeing the life cycle and the methods of the servlet first of all init method is used to initialize the server servlet then serv service method will do the necessary request and process and create the responses and the after do the processing after produces the proper response the destroy method is used to destroy the uh, delete the uh, servlet and to deallocate the memory uh, for the servlet following are the steps in which request flows through the servlet the client sends over over a request the request is accepted by the web server and forwarded to the web container in order to update the servlet's address the web container traces the web xml or xml file corresponding to the url uh, corresponding to the request url pattern by the time above process takes place the servlet should have been instantiated and initialized the init method is invoked to initialize the servlet by passing the servlet request and response object public service method is called by the container in the next step the servlet request and servlet response objects are typecasted to http request and http response objects by the public service method now protected service method is called by the public service method the protected service method dispatches the request to the correct handler method based on the type of request when servlet container shuts down it unloads all the servlets and call destroy method for each initialized server servlet let us see the advantages prime functionality of the servlet is that they are independent of server configuration and they are pretty much compatible with any type of web servers they are protocol independent it will support the protocols like ftp http and smtp and until destroyed manually the servlets can be retained in the memory helping process several requests over time also once a database connection is established it can facilitate process ser several requests for a database in a very same database session that's all about the uh, basics of java servlet thank you